Hey folks, so it's uh, Ben Abed here. Um, yeah, I mean, we're in TW 2020 right now, but as you can expect, as with anybody else who creates TW content on YouTube, and I guess on Twitch also, but even though I haven't checked that out lately, I'm sure you realize I'm going to talk here about TW9, um, what's going on, what the plans are, and I'm also, as you can see in the title of the video, going to go over the developer journals for my own thoughts. I'm um, just going to probably do this weekly just because it's better because like you don't want like a five minute video like hey that sounds cool um but anyway so as far as the series um i'm not giving up like i've done this through 2016 through 2020 and i'm still going to continue it i mean obviously i've been off and on the last little while unfortunately but just that's just life um you know life time getting older um being interested because like you know as you guys know i or at least I hope you guys know, I do put a decent amount of work into this, like as far as booking, um, figuring out promos, you know, I mean, honestly, I could do a lot less and probably just push it through, but I wouldn't be enjoy it. Like part of the fun I have is actually creating the storylines, doing all the wacky, you know, storylines, the promos, all that fun stuff. Cause like, I want to have the feeling of what's going on in my head. It is not perfect and everything else. So if I just like did, you know, he did a promo, they fought, they set up a match later, they had a good match, like all that stuff, like if people can do that just playing the game and enjoy themselves, no, more power to them, because honestly, that makes it easier for them, but I'm a weirdo. But that's what we're talking about. I just want, like, probably, um, we still have a couple months till the game is actually out, even in bed, beta. Um, so I'm going to try to push through, you know, actually get the game, because, like, I figure if I can get back on a quasi-normal schedule, I can be in about maybe July by the time the game is officially out. And then, you know, that's another, like, six, three, four months, and that'll deal with, like, all the early patches. So by the time 2006 is over in-game, hopefully the game will be in a state I can do controlled conversion and figure things out. But we'll have to see on that. But to what this video is about, the actual developer's journal. So for thoughts, um, I was surprised, but I wasn't surprised. Surprised. I just honestly thought that if there's no announcement of even work beginning, that at best the game next thing would be out until next year. Um, but since, like, it was said that it was, like, you know, made and start making about 18 months ago, that makes more sense. Um, release dates, like I said, like, July 27th is the beta, full release is August 3rd. It's okay, that's not two months, that's like, a, well, that's like a month. So actually, oops, never mind that time period, I'm sort of screwed. But oh well. Um, yeah, t I mean, that actually makes sense, honestly. Again, I don't know why they just don't throw it up on Steam. Um, yeah, converters, new features, same game, which I make sense. I know people want the football manager of, um, um, TW and there are people trying to do that to varying degrees of success. But the problem with this is two. One, it's a niche audience. Remember, most people already find like W2K's bookings thing complicated. EWR was even more. And like, you'd see a lot of people even now saying like, you know, E EWRs are as far as I can go. So TW is like a bit of that. And the difference is soccer is played by basically a billion people worldwide. And also there's like a 20 year track record. Um, even with OOTP, like that's is, I mean, honestly created by, I don't want to say like a better, but like something more in depth. And with like, also it helps like their actual stats in baseball, football, basketball, like, at worst, like you have like actual stats compared to all wrestling is subjective. This is also why there's never been like a really good like simulator for as far as like, you know, like a uh, major like for like movie making because there's so many weird things. But anyway, um, it's interesting TW9 is significantly bigger than TW2020, which is odd because I don't know, which is either a positive or bloat. I don't know. Um, yeah, large spike and release. Yeah, of course, they just don't tell us the time because we kill the site because we're all weirdos. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, 200 items. So yay, I guess. Um, here's the big thing, creative energy. So honestly, this is, unless something else pops up, is probably going to make or break the new game. If this really works, this will give sort of like the challenge that I think a lot of people want in the game and also more interesting backstage stuff. Because like, let's be honest here. For most backstage stuff, unless you're like me and actually let's just let bad things like sort of happen, you know, when I let, when I draw people just to give them money. Otherwise, everything is like, can be just helped by giving people money. Obviously, it seems like you can probably still do that, maybe, but like this stuff, like right now, 
like in my WWE game, I would probably have a booking team of Roddy Piper, who's like the other character, Arn Anderson, Paul Heyman, and maybe Johnny Ace, um, and Dusty Rhodes. Now, I don't know if that, that would be a terrible, like, but it would probably give them creative energy. The other thing is, from what I can tell here, um, I think people are worried, like, you won't be able to do certain finishes. I think, and I hope this is what happens, is everything you can do your creative finish, like, you know, you can do your, even on your indie show with five people, you can do your wacky, dusty DQ finish if you want. But I think creative energy will help make it go better. And that's something else, is, like, sometimes bad finishes should just happen. And they should be bad luck. And I realize some people want their perfect where they can just book their fantasy booking and everything goes great. They get all hundreds and everything is wonderful. Now, I'm not going to do that if you want that too, but it seems like you still be able to do that because hopefully what will happen here is all this stuff will just be bonuses. Um, like, you know, creative finishes, angle ID. So, so all this stuff, I hopeful, is just stuff that will be there. Um, and I think it will be helpful if it's actually not, like, specific. Like gimmick idea. Um, like it says here, like the gimmick idea basically helping somebody's new gimmick be more successful. I think that's good because like, honestly, like some gimmicks, like this is basically just like, you know, um, the difference between, you know, the Undertaker gimmick and how it was portrayed and the Duke Dorsey gimmick, you know? I don't know. Um, it's interesting that there's the gamble. So that's also interesting. Like maybe in this universe, the Undertaker gimmick fails or whatever. Um, and yeah, like it's better simulate like bad sake polish, which I do really enjoy. And worker days is good. Like right now, you know, just like put over people. I really like, you know, people who just have a great creative finish, but only if they win. I'm sure there's other stuff going on here, which I think is brought up later. But this stuff, if it works well, could really like if it doesn't work well, like I did see there were people worried it's sort of like um like um what's the word like mobile gamey, which I hope it isn't. Maybe it is, but if it is, oh well. But again, I think, I mean, obviously 90, it seems like most of this can be just like ignored by just having yourself as the booker and that's it. Which, hey, you know, if that's what people want to do, that's fine. Um, locking, I mean, that makes sense. You don't want the NXT selling billions of dollars. Um, again, I still haven't changed over from gift pit to gift pitcher back because I'm lazy. Uh, product narratives, again, as somebody who has tried to make a database and it got like sidetracked, that's interesting. It's like, because you, know, you can go, you know, WCW from, you know, Southern Iceland to, you know, Bischoff style or WD from, you know, you know, and this is also helpful, like, not necessarily because, like, there's some changes that would happen no matter what. And there's some st stuff ch changes, like, you know, just like, like, just like sort of the Puro changes, um, Lucha Libre changes, stuff like that. Um, and yeah, I mean, again, Rain, 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 Rain like, that's fine. Like, just because, like, yeah, I mean, I may be a weirdo who looks deeply into when certain um, wrestling TV shows were canceled or extended, but most people aren't like that. Um, okay, yeah. Inner Circle. Okay, so again, this is something else. Because, like, again, this is what the stuff that helps build a locker room. As we've seen in recent history, locker rooms can sometimes get combustive if everybody's not on the same page. Now, we do see, like, in the current WWE, that basically once they remove Vince, everybody seems happy, and though I'm sure not things are perfect. But it seems like things are basically okay because there's a strong leader and everything else. But in other companies and other companies in the past, yeah, there's stuff like this. Um, like locker room leaders. I mean, again, maybe in like Meisters, that's Arn, maybe instead of being Booker, Chief Enforcers. Yeah. Um, I mean, we there's a certain maybe person who was this on a certain show for a certain company ran by a son of a billionaire who didn't go out well, had a tolerations. I mean, you have Jim Ross. It is Morrell Officer. Um, that's interesting. Senior road agent, so you know, whoever, senior referee, administrator, woman trainer, interesting, travel organizer. Um, I mean, what this also does is this allows um, for reasons for people like um, Howard Finkel, um, Bruce Pritchard, and such, who are, main, who are basically use, or Pat Patterson, who are basically uses at a certain point in beyond just being road agents in like in, in games to actually have roles. Um, but yeah, elimination order, great. No longer have to say, yes, it says this on the screen, but I can say this. Brief name size, sure. I mean, I'm sure there's reasons where I come across it. Jerk venues, okay, yeah. Um, right, I mean, that makes sense. There's not, like, a 50,000 seat venue in Hawaii. And his promises, great. Exactly. This is great. Like, 
you know, if, you know, Canyon comes to me and he says he wants John, Jonathan Toro to kill him in an angle, great. Um, team bonding, yeah, I don't know. I mean, this is, might be fun, like, again, but I'm booking in the more wild and whirly reason in pitch show frequency. Um, great. I also like this includes being able to disable them because in a, a certain point, like in like the eighties, like there wasn't really independent shows. I mean, there were, but they were so small scale that nobody was on them. Um, but like, again, now, you know, and especially like there's a indie show basically every day. Um, uh, okay. I mean, again, this is something where I kind of, I mean, like it's kind of impossible to have a Roman Reigns effect or in a certain case, like Chris Jericho a certain current problems in real life, but you know, we that could see. Um new narrative for, okay, yeah. This company name changes, right, yeah. Basically, you know, Ted Turner's in charge now of CW or other stuff like that. Um so yeah, I actually do like that. Um because yeah. Um bank I mean this makes sense, honestly. Um in real life, as I think was pointed out in the comments, most companies all, always lose like most indie companies lose money. But they don't lose so much money that, like, basically it's a labor of love or a labor of credit cards. So, yeah, this is fine. Um, even though, to a certain extent, like, a problem in 2020 is they're just way, it's way, just way too easy to make money. Um, even though I've had some problems in my game, but that's, I think, just CML adjacent. But, yeah, again, solid stuff. Again, like, the, the, the backstage stuff, I think, is sort of the core here. Um, I think that's sort of like the big thing in this game is actually making a backstage that's more than just people pissed at each other and random stuff. Um, geotags, I'll be honest, I kind of don't quite get this, but I think like it's basically venues, like, you know, venues and locations. So like people can run in. Yeah, I mean, I get it. And it seems big, better than a certain system. Like, yeah, like this makes sense. Like, you know, if you're running a show like, okay. A good example is the local indie here in Seattle, Defy. Defy does not run in, well, they kind of do, but not, they do not run in Olympia. They occasionally run in Portland, um, or they have like, I think some sold shows out in Eastern Washington, but for the most part, they run in Washington in one venue and that's it. Um, yeah. And yeah, obviously we can book where the hell we want. Um, yeah, I mean, heights, weights, I mean, I never really cared about this, um, because heights and weights in wrestling are bullshit, but I understand, like, it's easier for some people to understand, like, okay, this person is a heavyweight, which means they're 265 pounds or whatever. Sure. Um, yeah, junior heavyweight limit, that makes sense. Again, like, you know, in 19, uh... In like in 2001, WWE, the junior heavyweight limit was like 230. Now it's like 190 or something. Um, yeah, I mean, this makes sense. And almost, every, I, I think I understand why Adam did this originally, because the whole Hulk Hogan, Jesse Ventura, but like, there's too many random people going into politics and, and games. Not in mine personally, but I've seen in like other videos I've been watching. Uh, training facility, yeah, I mean, basically this is, you don't want heavyweights coming out in your junior New Japan dojo, and you also don't want, like in 1984, your WE training to be a bunch of like lightweights. Um, yeah, belt description's great. Um, quarter, okay, so, the yeah, I think, here's the thing. I understand people's understandings on it, and the fact this is a, like, game for profit, but at the same point, this is not electronic arts, this is not, you know, even sports interactive. Like, the reality is, and I understand, like, lots of people as, have done a lot of work on the Cornellverse, in the mods. And I can pull up all the pictures I've seen of that, and they're all great. But like even the most the best ones have not got them all. And I know some argue they could if they were given even wording. But at the same time, like this will give like sort of a base, you know, stuff. And again, a part of this is AI is coming whether we like it or not. Like and again, if you know this is not Rockstar saying they're doing AI for the voices or something weird like that. This is frankly a one, you know, a one person game, one man game who is running it through a company that I think is like basically two or three people. You know, again, if you're so abhorrently opposed to it, I get it being upset about it, but nobody's getting rich here. Like, 
like, you know, maybe in a perfect world, Adam would send three cents to the pitcher maker. But I, again, there are so many more important things in the world. Or calendar, I mean, yeah, this makes sense. This makes it so Starcade is no longer my last show of the year and other fun stuff. Um, yeah, scheduling, I mean, scheduling system really does make sense. It's a little confusing, but I think as long as the editor is okay, it'll be good things to create, you know? Um, yeah, I like that the game now knows, like, you know, if you're first, like, you know, if your show that happens on the first, like it says here, happens July 4th, move it or don't move it if it's specifically for July 4th. Like, I, for one of my shows, like, I actually like like it being on 4th of July. And there you go. Um, multi-day events. Yeah, WrestleMania. Um, I mean, honestly, Starcade for my show might eventually become a, a two-day event quicker than real life. It's good the wrestlers won't be annoyed. Um, yeah. And obviously, pay-per-views are both on their own. Forbidden Door. Hey, yeah, this is good. And also, this will allow stuff like um, Nicole Russell Fest and, and the Cornellverse and such to work better um, on this day. I mean, this will be fun, especially if I get to my, uh, if I get my alternate history mod so I can, like, throw stuff in, like, you know, whatever. Um, other TV shows. Oh, right, yeah, okay, yeah. Venue list, yeah. Great. I mean, yeah, this makes sense. I get why he works less. Mass editor, great. Anniversary reminders, okay. Yeah, again, this is more for, like, local to global stuff or other random stuff. Um, improving quarantine, yay. Import lineages, great. If only we could just import everything from wrestlingtitlehistory.com or whatever. Uh, move sets is great. Um, again, random, yeah, again. We don't want to, everybody's not wanting to investigate whether it was out, out for nine or 11 months with their injury in 1992. I might do that because I'm a weirdo, but otherwise, no. Um, company awards, I mean, there's company civic hall of fame, but I don't know. Like, I get why people want, might want this for like their local to global, but I don't really care about it because the game's wacky about it anyway. I mean, it would be fun to see like what the game's conditions are my best tag team in like 2003. Uh, but the title records I really like because like it would be interesting to go back um, and see, yeah, who had the most defenses, who's held my, you know, cruiser rate title for the most days, fun stuff like that, especially with stuff like local to global and such. Uh, turn contracts, it seems like, like basically, what I really hope here is basically once your turn contract starts, you're stuck there. Like, because one problem, which I guess people, you know, didn't mind because it's someone helped for them, is if your guy is working a tour for Noah, he's not coming back for your indie show. I'm sorry. You just have to work around it. Um, yeah. I'm sure hopefully this will also be worked out. So, like, you know, people who are, like, on, um, can still, like, you know, stuff like Forbidden Door or whatever, you know, Ranford and more is made up. Uh, Global Sills. I mean, this, um... This will also help with um with uh with mod making because you know you know that a if an eighty psychology in this mod is top five percent then you know you know don't make a bunch of people with ninety psychology if you're adding people um, hiatus warnings yeah I mean that's that's makes sense um yeah uh, this is also good because one problem I was having with with some of like the fun or history mod I was working on and just in general what you see in the game is like. You know, especially over in New Japan, there's random, like, Joshi bookers taking over, you know, like, um, Japanese feds or vice versa. Like, you know, sorry, Kabashi, you know, sorry, Baba, you're not booking, you know, all, all Japan women's ever. Um, yeah, I mean, this makes sense because, honestly, the game is bad at, like, so, yeah. This, I mean, is a little pushing history, but, like, that's fine. Cutting, I mean, yeah, this makes sense because in real life this happened, OVW... Um, Deep South Wrestling, uh, eventually Memphis Championship Wrestling, and so on. I'm sure other companies, I'm just remembering WWE stuff. Um, right, opening website, Rev Those Stories, again, Mod Night Macon, Romantic Checks, I mean, isn't that just like contradictory romantic relationships? I don't know. Um, but yeah. And yeah, so, um, while I'm going over this, some of my thoughts, I mean, I think, again, I'm going to buy the game. I bought every fucking, you know, version of this game. I understand why people have issues with the game, but I think people, I don't think they're asking too much, but like, 
let's look at the alternatives and what's going on. Like, I'm sure they have their ups and downs, their positives, but like from what I've read, like a lot of them, like there's giant stuff that's in TW that they're missing in all of them, even if the pictures look better. And in theory, like the, you know, uh, the flow is better. But like, if the flow is better, but it's simple, like, you know, like I enjoy Journey of Wrestling, but this is a very simple system and works well for them. And that's great, but it's not my TW replacement. And that's the thing is if you want me to buy your alternative TW and you complain about how bad TW is, then you have to have all this, you have to have most of the stuff in TW and it has to be just as good as TW if you're going to, you know, basically say Adam's a bad developer because he's still stuck on a bed, which might be true, but also that just may be where we as weirdos who like booking wrestling on a video game or a spreadsheet are stuck at. Like, you know, it is what it is. Um, but anyway, other stuff I think I kind of want in the game. I mean, somebody did post on the forum basically more difficulty, which is true. Like, okay, I think a good thing that Journey Wrestling actually has is popularity versus overness. Because, like, I think a great example actually is um, somebody like Ricochet. Because Ricochet was popular in WWE. He would get a pop, he, his matches would be interested, and they would get, like, you know, if you had a rating for a Ricochet match in real life, it would probably be high. But he wasn't that over because he wasn't affecting anybody watching TV or ratings. And I think that's sort of like two things that should be disconnected. But it's really difficult because like people would want to understand why their 85 show was not affecting ratings. Because it was, it was a great show with very good wrestling and even good angles. But nobody cared about anybody on the TV show. I mean, you could kind of call this a certain period of AEW or even a certain period of WWE. When, like, they're, or on the other hand, like I think one problem is like... People who are really over will always have really good ratings, even if they're not really that good. Like, here's here here's the thing. Alternate Warrior should actually be a bad promo, but it should be so over that it doesn't matter, at least for a while. Like, obviously, this comes great, but, like, just, like, other... And, uh, again, I'm probably explaining this badly, but I sort of get, like, there's, there's something where there's people who actually affect business numbers and people who get pops. A perfect example of this is actually Jim Duggan, at least in his post Iron Sheik like area when he was basically, because Jim Duggan always got a pop on TV. People were into his matches and that stuff, but he was not no longer affecting like ticket sales. Um, another thing I think is just in general is, um, I mean, not really the AI, but I guess like, um, what's, what's the right way to put it here? I do hope, like, because something did point out, like, at a certain point, like, the AI, like, like, and I saw this a lot, like, as I was playing as WCW, is, like, the the game is bad at, like, actually figuring out how much people should get paid, and, like, Predator, and it's, it's a lot better than previous games, where, you're, where you'd not have to worry about other companies stealing your talent ever, but, like, you know, in a war, like, companies should be willing to go up and over to pay for whomever, you know? Um, and that's something, and, like, there's always the little stuff, like, the realistic stuff. Like, again, the booking AI always gets a little better, even though it's never perfect. Um, like, and, like, I really do wish, like, like, even, like, there would be an er internal booking team for every real, like, for every AI company. And even if we, even this could not be seen, or maybe it's something you could set in the editor beforehand, like, basically... People, on, like, there should be a list of, like, low-level, like, under X popularity who they're pushing. Because the problem is, like, what you, happens now is, like, you bring up Batista in 2003 WWE or Goldberg in 2001 in 1998 WCW or even somebody like, you know, um, oh, God, I'm blanking on his name, Braun Breaker in, like, modern WWE. All the people would start with very low popularity and the game would book them as droppers, even though... So they were all obviously strongly pushed. And that's things like the game to be able to like determine either in, in the background or set by the user to like, you know, these are the people with high star quality or high whatever stat is important to the product of that game, uh, of that company. And we're going to push them strong. Obviously, you know, I um, mean, line stuff in Japan and everything else. Um, but yeah. Anyways, I'm looking forward to the new game as always. Um, you know, again, I love TW. I've, this is the game. Honestly, like, this is a game that I've played more than every other video game put together because I'm a weirdo, and, but this is going to a video of other weirdos, so I'm sure people 
you know, will understand that. And I just hope the game's good. Like, always hope the game's good, it's better than the last one, and then I enjoy it. And this has been true. Um, seems like we weren't going to have the firestorm over the graphics like the last time outside the AI, AI stuff. And, you know, we'll see how the next week goes. Um, again, I'm going to try to get back on a regular schedule as far as FSW, but we'll see how that goes. Anyway, that's it for now. Uh, comment below what you're thinking, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let's tomorrow, talk later, adios, have a good one.